Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with the new easiest deck in Clash Royale. Even though this deck takes no skill, you'll be taking a ton of towers. Just stack up Spear Goblin Huts and Furnaces and watch as your opponent gets frustrated. When they angrily bridge spam on the other side, you'll stomp on them with a Mega Knight and Archer Queen. And if they waste their spells once on your spawners, you'll get immense value with your Goblin Gang and minions. Lightning has solid synergy in this deck because it can remove ranged units like Musketeers or Archer Queens or buildings like Bond Tower Cannon that opponents will try to use to counter your spawners or mega knights. The number 64 player in the world is only using this deck. A deck this easy should never be this good. If you don't have Archer Queen, you can use Mother Witch or Flying Machine. Let's go jump straight to some games, spawn some wins, and assert dominance. A whole lot of love to everyone that's using Critic Codes or Tag to support the channel. All right, we got a game against NOP. We just got to add an E there and be like, nope, you're not going to win this game, hopefully. I'm going to go for a Furnace here and just see what he's up to. If this guy's going to go for Fly Machine, we already know that it's likely going to be the Royal Hogs Fly Machine Royal Recruits deck that everyone and their mother is playing right now. It's probably one of the best decks in the game in Clash Royale. And there it is. Let's get it. Sort of Mega Knight on top, and I think I can go in for a Minions. Wow, that was great. The fact that we wanted to drop the Minions on the right-hand side to counter the Fly Machine, and the Mega Knight decided to go in the same side too. That's beautiful, baby. He's going to have Golden Knight. Hmm. Do you have arrows with this deck? I kind of want to go Goblin Gang right now. Because if you don't have arrows, it's going to be very hard for you to defend. Dude, that's so good. He went for Bar Barrel instead of going in for anything else on the ground and still took a ton of damage from the minions. The good stuff overall. I'm pretty happy with our start. We're currently up 2,000 damage. Around like 1,000 in the world, right? This guy has to be an extremely good player. So we're going to go in for another Goblin Hut a little bit lower, and we'll see what this guy's up to. Because if he goes in for Goblin Cage, we could Lightning on that, right? Not necessarily the right decision for us in the start of the game, because, you know, we're currently up so much. Rather not throw away my lead. I kind of want to focus on defending right now. So I'm going to go Archer Queen in the side where the majority of his spam is going to go. And then I'm going to go in for our Mega Knight here. Okay, so I'm going to go and click the Archer Queen ability just because I don't want him to be able to dash onto that as well. We know it's going to lock onto our tower, so kind of just have to eat the damage that happens and make sure that I get counter push. So I'm going to go minions. I'm going to get another Archer Queen ability in the right-hand side. And then I think the Mega Knight takes the majority of his tower. That's what we were expecting last time with the Fireball. But watch this. He's going to Bar Barrel. And now he doesn't have Bar Barrel in cycle. So we go Goblin Gang on the left-hand side. The Archer Queen stays alive. And we are taking both towers at the same time. That's how this deck works. Your opponent might feel good in the moment doing 2,000 damage to your tower. But after all is said and done, it's not going to be fun. We can go in for a Furnace here. The Fire Spirit is going to splash onto all the Royal Hogs. We can Bar Barrel afterward. And yeah, this is completely cleaned up. If you guys ever play against Royal Hogs Fly Machine, one of my main decks in Clash Royale, you will 100%, 100-0 that matchup. 0% chance of them winning. We utterly asserted dominance, taking two towers and almost even three crowning. And this guy tried his hardest the entire time. Ridiculously easy stuff, and now we're 1,777 medals. That's a lot of lucky sevens, putting us at 1,300 in the world. Hey, we got a game against Oxlet. What the heck? What's up, dude? We're dropping good luck. And some love, and we're gonna see what's happening. Obviously, Oxlade is one of the best players in the world, so I gotta focus up in this one. Kinda wanna just go for a Barb Reel and see what he's up to. I feel a little bit bad that I'm running this deck into him, but maybe he's also running something similar. We're gonna have to find out. Oxlade, are you ready to rumble? Hopefully your towers take a tumble. I'm gonna go in for the Furnace pretty far back and try to get some value from that. I don't know if it's gonna be able to kill all the Spear Goblins. It looks like it jumped onto the Spear Goblins despite the Spear Goblins being able to finish it off. Spear Goblins walked into the Fire Spirit. Okay, so he's got Zappy, so it's definitely gonna be a graveyard deck. That's typically what he plays anyway. So I'm kind of expecting that to happen any second. Oh wait, Rail Recruits. Huh, okay, so I'm gonna go for Mega Knight in the back, right? I'm gonna build up a really big push and I want to get absurd value right now with my minions. I need to get absurd value with the minions. The fact that he doesn't have Royal Recruits in Cycle means that he just dropped 7 Elixir. Also, he dropped his arrows. Huh. Oxalate. Are you able to do that? I, I, if you have Fireball plus arrows, then I'll have to eat my own words, but I hope that you don't. Okay, so he's going to go Barbaro instead. He's going to lose almost everything here. I think we win. I'm pretty sure that we just go and click our Archer Queen ability, and we kill his entire tower, and then the Mighty Miner dies to the Barbaro and doesn't do enough damage. Yeah. That's a really good start for us. If the Archer Queen can 3 crowd him, that would be awesome, but I don't think it's going to happen. I'd have to be really lucky for that to happen. I can't get another ability down, but we forced out the Fly Machine to roll on the right-hand side, so we can kind of ignore that right now. As you guys noticed, I've played a lot of Royal Recruits. Like, that's my main deck in Clash Royale. I knew that if he didn't have that in Cycle, it would be really, really hard for him to defend the Mega Knight. So I was like, if I eat some damage from the Zappies and I build up a big push, it's probably the best way to play. 
you guys already know that Onslaught is one of the best players in the entire world, so I still have to focus up for the rest of the game. Like, the game is not over. I usually like cutting to the end and being like, ah, we definitely won this one, but we're pretty far from that point. All right, so we're going to get that Furnace down. I guess I can go in for a Mega Knight again in the back right in the side that he wants to go and, you know, get all of his damage since the Furnace and Spear Goblins are in the left-hand side already defending there. It's nice that you can Mega Knight one side and then Spear Goblin Hut and Furnace in the other and just be like, yeah, we're content, we're chilling, we're vibing with it. I know that he's got arrows, so I'm going to wait for him to do that. Kind of want to go for minions here and spread out all of my stuff so he can't get too much arrows value. I'm going to go Bar Barrel here and notice how he's arrowing, but, like, we're still getting so much value with the Spear Goblins on the other side. Wait, I can Mega Knight in the middle. I have two Mega Knights right now. This is a disaster for my dude. If I Lightning and I get two more Mega Knight shots, I win. Yo, let's get it. That's a Lightning Three Crown, guys. And you love to see it. So Oxlet, I think, is a better player than me. And I was able to Three Crown him because of this dirty deck. In case you somehow don't know who Oxlet is, he finished 25 in the world in a global tournament and has a personal best of well over 8,000 trophies at 106 in the world. And our deck completely carried us to beating him. All right, so we're gonna be jumping into the action to get some top tier players today. I don't know what this guy's gonna have, but I'm ready for it. I've got a very passive deck and I'm just gonna be lurking in the shadows with my Mega Knight ready to jump on our opponent. If I go for minions at the start, it's not that bad of a decision. I'd rather go Archer Queen in the back though, because our opponent just dropped Log. So if they've got Poison plus Log, now they can't kill the Queen, but they've got Lightning. Nice, dude. That's great. So that's a negative three elixir trade for our opponent overall because he dropped a log and then he also did a negative one with the lightning on top of our tower on the Archer Queen. So that's that's fine. You know, we're up three elixir. Let's roll Mega Knight in the back and see what we can make happen with it. He's going to have Royal Ghost Lightning. Oh, no. Dude, if this is going to be a Pekker Ram Rider deck, I'm going to be so tilted, but I don't think it is. Wait, if I lightning on the, the Royal Ghost and I lightning on the Fisherman and then the Mega Knight jumps on the tower, I don't think he's ready. Dude, that's hilarious. We knocked back the Hunter, so it wasn't able to get all the shots on it, I think. He's going to... Oh, I thought he was going to activate King Tower for a second, but he missed it. Wow. This is a very peculiar start for us. I don't think I've ever played a matchup where I didn't know what my opponent had for the first, like, four or five cards. And then I eventually figure out his RG, but, like, it took us a while. I'm going to go and push that directly into the Furnace, as you guys saw. Like, I'm pretty confident that that Royal Giant would have went towards my tower. Maybe I'm wrong there, but... I'd like to think that I saved myself with that goblin gang. I'd like to think they're not useless. So he's going to have Hunter and he whiffs one of the minions. That's really good for us because I can go Archer Queen here and I should be able to kill the Hunter. And then the Archer Queen's range is going to be a little bit better than the Hunter's. So the Hunter's just going to like have the shots disperse and barely even tickle us. I'm going to wait for that to pull and then I'm going to click the Archer Queen ability so that it doesn't get, you know, attacked by both the towers and we finish off the Fisherman. That should give us one shot on the tower. Oh, he went up for Archer Queen counter with skeletons. Very smart decision on his end. Okay, since we have two buildings, it's probably better for us to go in for Goblin Hut here so he can't lightning the building and the tower. So we're going to go in for the Goblin Hut in the left, and then we're going to use our Furnace on defense. I think usually you would want to use the Spear Goblin Hut on defense against the Rail Giant, but since I didn't have the right card order, I kind of had to do this. Yeah, so I'm going to go in for a Furnace, and I got to go for Bar Barrel because the, the Spear Goblins are likely going to want to get logged from our opponent, and then we can use Goblin Gang afterward. If not, yep, there we go. Awesome. That's exactly what we needed. And I'm going to go for minions aggressively as well because we have Spear Goblins coming out in the left-hand side. Just a lot for him to have to work with at this exact same time. Spear Goblin should be able to finish off the Fisherman. I don't think that we're going to be able to kill the Royal Ghost. Maybe it does die, please. Oh, it went invisible, but the arrow is still hit it because the arrow was launched at the Royal Ghost. That's pretty cool. All right, so as I said before, really want to go in for the Goblin Hut on defense most of the time. It's just a bit safer. He probably goes in for a log and then doesn't want to go in for anything else. So I'm going to go in for Goblin Gang here, and I might go and click the Archer Queen ability when he goes Ghost. All right, cool. We kill most of the Ghost. We're able to get a Skeletons out of our opponent. And then the Goblin Gang in the right-hand side. What the heck? Okay, I'm expecting him to go in for a Fisherman, so I want to Bar Barrel and make a prediction. It worked. I'm going to go for minions, because he was going to try to pull the Mega Knight with that Fisherman, and I think it's eventually going to work again, but it would have been way better for him if it worked out all in a quick fashion. I'm going to go Archer Queen here, because I don't think he has enough Elixir for the Lightning immediately. Honestly, I don't even know if he has Elixir for Lightning in general. So we're going to go and click it now, because he's going to drop his Fisherman. That's good. I can go in for the Goblin Hut in the right-hand side as well, because we have all of our damage there. Yo, Archer Queen again with more value. That's three shots, my dudes. This is such a clutch comeback right now. We were down so much damage. And he used his log, and he doesn't have that in cycle. So I want to go Goblin Gang, and I want him to use his Fisherman and then pull the Goblins instead. I'm going to go for minions as well. And look at the Goblins going in front. This is so hard for him to deal with. He's logging, but I think he's going to get distraught by the fact that we can Lightning on the Ghost and also the Hunter again. That's so clean. That's a lot of damage, guys. 
I don't think that the Spear Goblins are going to give us enough here, but they're going to force out a lot of Elixir, so we like it. Getting another log from our opponent is obviously really fascinating for me and frustrating for him. He's going to Lightning again. That makes sense. I would do that if I were you. I'm going to go in for Archer Queen. I kind of can't go for a building in the back because you might just go in for an aggressive Royal Giant and then ruin me, so I need to be able to have everything that I need to counter. Could have Goblin Ganged in the middle to posture and defend, but it's okay. We're just going to make sure that he can't log everything at once. The Archer Queen might even die, which would be very bad for me, but it doesn't. So I'm going to go and click the Archer Queen ability, and then I'm going to go for a Barbarian Barrel. The Rail Ghost didn't hit everything, so I'm going to try to go in for another Mega Knight at the river. And then I'm... Uh, do I want to go Goblin Gang? No, I just want to Lightning on the Hunter. Maybe that's the only good play that I have available. I'm going to go for Minions off to the side again. I don't think the Mega Knight's going to jump on what we need, but maybe. I'm going to go for another Archer Queen up top so then he can't Lightning on what he wants. And as you guys can see, Minions just do so much damage now. I think he has to Lightning on this. I think he has the lightning on this, so I'm not going to go with this Archer Queen ability. The minion's on the tower! Oh my gosh, that minion just did so much work. Wait, if I just keep up the aggression, he might not be able to do anything. So I'm just going to keep spamming. Or do this. We're going to go for a Goblin Hut here. Is he going to log? He's not going to be able to hit. And then we want to lightning on top of the tower because we know he's going to lightning on the tower as well. So we need to be able to get enough damage. I don't think the Royal Giant gets a shot. And we walk with a win, baby! Wow, what a clutch game. That's what we love to see, and this guy is laughing right now, but you know he's crying on the inside. The Toxic Goblin for our Toxic deck, and then he's flexing the Global Tournament emote as well. So he finished top 100 in the world in a Global Tournament. After that win, we cruised all the way up to 900 in the world. This deck is absolutely disgusting. We made a massive comeback in that game. We were down so much damage, and the Spear Goblin clutched up on defense. And that player was substantially better than me too. He finished 760 in the world last season, and he had a personal best of well over 8,000 trophies. Creating comebacks against some of the best players in the world should never be this easy. Hey, we're playing against Diego. This guy finished 83 in the world, so he's definitely going to be insanely good, and I have to try my hardest. You guys know the deal. I'm going to go for Furnace here, and he's going to go for Skeletons. So whenever I see Skeletons, I'm fully expecting our opponent to be able to maybe go in for like a fast cycle deck with 2.6 Hog Rider, maybe some Fireball Mortar deck. We'll have to wait and see. Well, all I know is that our Furnace is not going to be very happy if he's going to have multiple spells to counter it. So he's going to have Mother Witch? Okay. So Fireball, Skeletons, Mother Witch. It's either going to be like a really fast Royal Hogs deck that I've never played against before, or it's going to be a Royal Giant deck. I would guess it's RG. So he's going to go for Archer Queen. Now we know exactly what it is. Wait, I can Lightning on the Archer Queen, and I can hit the Fisherman. Fisherman me, sir. Oh, he's got Recruits. What? Well played, man. I wasn't ready. My body wasn't prepared for this at all. Okay, I kind of want to go Archer Queen and then go click my Bar Barrel so we can force out the Archer Queen ability a little bit faster than he wants to. Oh, it just died. Let's go, baby. Oh. <laughs> that Barbarian just one-tapped the Queen. Took her out for dinner. That's what I'm talking about, baby. So he's going to go in for like a Fireball on this. So I don't want to spend any extra Elixir. He was just got distracted by Skeletons. I could have been wrong, but I think it gets distracted by Skeletons there. You guys have to let me know. Is it stupid to click the ability or not? Nah? I just didn't want to waste the elixir. All right, so the fire spirit might jump out of the tower here. I could lightning. I just think that's a slight overcommitment. I don't want to do it. I'd rather go in for minions and then go for Mega Knight at the river and then apply a lot of aggression that way. Oh, geez, dude. Really? You're going to have arrows and you're going to have Mother Witch in the same deck? Well, hopefully the Mega Knight jumps on the tower. I would love for that to happen, but it's not looking like that's going to work. The fire spirits are maybe going to hit him. Oh, the Mega Knight does jump and both of the fire spirits. Oh, I got a little bit too greedy. I was like, both of them definitely going to give us value. <laughs> got nothing from the second. It's okay. I can go Goblin Gang on top of the Archer Queen and finish it off. Remember, he can't go and click the Invincibility two times in a row. It's just not going to happen. Spear Goblin's lock on a tower. Bait out Royal Hogs. We can go for a Goblin Hut. He probably ends up having just Fireball and nothing else, right? Yo, let's go. This Barbaro is coming up clutch. That's why you have Barbaro in this deck. So then the Mother Witches that are pretty much everywhere in the meta don't get you any value. So I can Mega Knight at the river, and if he Fireballs, it's not that scary. Fireball plus arrows kills my Archer Queen, so I think he's going to roll with that. That's what I would expect. So I don't want to spend the Elixir for the ability. Yep, I love making those type of predictions because it's so important to do. And then we can Lightning. Dude, this is so good. He thought the Fly Machine would do enough damage, and then he has to go and overspend with an Archer Queen afterward. Beautiful, baby. And remember, I think he's going to try to go in for, like, arrows. So I kind of want to go Goblin Gang a little bit earlier, so then we get him to arrows that. Or I guess he's going to click the ability. Dude, this is... A little bit sketchy, but maybe the Barbarrel can tank so that we can finish off the Archer Queen and then afford a Mega Knight. Don't know if we can afford the Mega Knight in time, but I need to. I really need this Mega Knight down. Oh my gosh. I'm going to go Goblin Gang on the other side. Can he arrows me? I think he's going to arrows this. I'm super sketch. 
Oh, uh, yep, that's uh, that's a lot of damage. Can we get enough with the Mega Knight counter push or not? Nah? The Mega Knight's jumping on the tower. He can't afford the rare recruits in time. Let's freaking go. Wow, that was like the luckiest win of my life. We just beat someone so much better than me. And that's what this no skill deck does so well. Even if your opponent finished 83 in the world, it's not a problem. When the Mega Knight jumps on your opponent's towers for the win, the game is Finn. All right, let's see if we can keep it up. This guy is not cycling a single thing, so you guys already know the deal. First things first, Furnace, I choose you. Kind of my favorite card with this deck to cycle because you want to use the Spear Goblin Hut more so for defense. The Fiery Spirits apply a lot of pressure. They give you way more value over time. This guy is immediately going to go in for his Musketeer. So I want to go minions in the right-hand side. The Fire Spirit jumped out of the tower? What? It hit the Musketeer? I don't understand how that worked. <laughs> Such a dumb card. It's so stupid how that works. It's like, it shouldn't work, but when it does work, it's so satisfying. I'm going to go Goblin Gang here. And the Musketeer got damaged by the Fire Spirit, so he obviously just did not want to worry about that at all. He's just like, I'm going to eat the Spear Goblins. I'm going to eat the other damage. And I'm going to rock at you instead. We kind of have a relatively even damage advantage for, compared to our opponent. We have like an advantage on the right-hand side if we want to go there, but I don't know. It's kind of a similar spot. I'm going to go for another Spear Goblin Hut here because I have Mega Knight in case he's got Hog Rider, which he likely has. And when we play against a Hog Rider Rocket deck, we know that the buildings are going to be a problem for our opponent because he can't hit multiple buildings at once. He doesn't have an efficient way of countering them. If you drop a six elixir investment on a building, it's a bad trade every single time. So he's going to want to use his log on that. If he decides to go for a musketeer, we can Mega Knight on the musky. Otherwise, I just want to go for minions to completely clean up the Valkyrie for pretty good trade overall. It's not like he's going to go musketeer at the river. No one does that. If he goes musketeer on the right-hand side, we could also lightning that if we really wanted to. I'm going to Archer Queen in the back, and we'll see if he decides to go for a Hog Rider, because we do have Mega Knight in cycle. going to be a great decision for us. He's going to rocket on the Archer Queen. I didn't expect him to do that, because it's dispersing his damage. Pretty interesting play to see our opponent play that passively. This is the first player that we've played against all day that has been taking his sweet time every single time to before he goes in for the win condition. If he's got... Oh, wait. He could end up having an Expo deck. There's a chance he's got, like, some wacky... Yes, it actually, it actually was a weird Expo deck. That's what I was thinking, because I think he would have went for, like, a Hog Rider or Royal Hogs or something. So he's not having a good time. <laughs> for the first time in our life, we can make the Expo player rage. Let's freaking go, baby. This is what we live for. This is what we breathe for. This is what the toxicity was actually made to do. He's not having a good time. He just keeps spamming the emoji. He's like, dude, stop it. And I'm not stopping. We're on a nonstop train tr straight towards your tower to deliver some pain. I'm going to go in for a Goblin Gang when you decide to log. I can also go Archer Queen in a more aggressive manner. It's hard for you to defend this, right? Because we can Lightning on top of the Musketeer and hit the Cannon. And then get value with the Archer Queen after when you're expecting that to die. Yo, he dropped his Valkyrie so far away that I can click the Archer Queen ability when it gets closer and then just shut it down. Archer Queen should give us one shot at the tower, but he decides to go for an Ice Spirit instead. Now, because he has a very limited amount of Elixir and he doesn't have Login Cycle, I'm going to Goblin Gang with the Fire Spirit. The Fire Spirit should kill the Skeletons. We're going to force out a Cannon, and then we can go for minions with our Mega Knight. This is hilarious. We're forcing out the Log, and now he has literally no Elixir, so I'm going to go Archer Queen, expecting him to go Skeletons. So then I'll pre barb Barrel on it. Hopefully he doesn't go in for a rocket. Okay, he went for the, the Barbarian Barrel as expected. So now we go in for, or he went in for the Skeletons as expected for our Barb Barrel. The Archer Queen locks under the tower for a couple shots. Dude, he's so tilted right now. I love it. <laughs> this doesn't happen very often, you know? You don't get to play against really good Expo players too often in Clash Royale. At least for me, I, I usually mess around at a little bit lower trophies than top 1,000 in the world. But this is a top 1K or top 800 Expo player that's getting shrecked. So kind of want to go in for an Archer Queen at the river on the right-hand side, but at the same time, I'm just going to wait and see what he's going to do. So yeah, I'm going to Lightning this 100%, and then we're going to try to get more value. I was hoping he would decide to do something else, like maybe go in for a Valkyrie or something. I'm going to go in and force out the Log. Oh, I was hoping the Archer Queen would stay alive. Now with the no Log in cycle, he has to go for a Valkyrie on this. You can't get away with Skeletons. You can't do that. You have to go for the Valkyrie, and there you go. Finally dropping it. Last possible second. All right, so we're going to go for a Mega Knight here. It should jump back on the Valkyrie, which is totally okay. I think it's going to relock, which is okay, because then we can go for a Lightning, and then we can go for Minions. <laughs> I feel like I'm tactively trolling this man the entire time. I'm going to go Archer Queen as well. I hope that we can break through. But as you guys already know, like these are one of those matchups that I just don't want to lose against an Expo player. So I'm just going to be playing as safe as I possibly can until the Archer Queen melts his dreams. 
GG, well played and peace out. There's no better way than ruining an Expo player's day. There's a lot of really nice Expo players, but there's nothing worse than getting rocket cycled by an Expo player perpetually. So I think that our toxic deck might be the way to crush every Expo player and make them switch their deck. And we're actually ending at 666 in the world. 666, proof that this deck is definitely the devil itself. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more daily videos and have an incredible rest of your day.